Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm talking about my top five best books in my comic book collection. So if you guys don't know, there's a little uh, thread going around basically saying, hey, show me your top five and we can nominate each other in the community. I like this. So I was nominated by Comic Books Galore first. Go check them out. I was nominated by Sinfully Good Comics and then finally I was nominated by Collector Auctions. Thank you to all three of those channels for watching my videos and supporting me. And also go check them out and give them a sub, show them some love. All right, so how this works is I need to nominate three more people. So I am nominating Alex, the comic book hoarder, the original OG from this whole comic book YouTube gang. Then I'm nominating Jamie from Dragon Inc. Comics, fresh back from Sandland, keeping our country safe. Salute. And then third, I am nominating my friends from Open by Chance, my good friend Dave, and the lovely Lady Pop Hunter, the dynamic duo. Go show them some love. All three great channels. Can't go wrong. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about my five top comics in my collection. These are some of my more expensive books, but I do have some other books that are more valuable, but these are my top five. So let's get into them. All right, number five on the list is Invincible number one. This is the tale of Mark Grayson, aka Invincible and his father, Omni-Man. This is a fantastic book, one of the best comic books I've ever read, and probably one of the best superhero stories I've ever read. Robert Kirkman is an absolute legend. If you didn't watch, he's one of my top, top, top 10 favorite writers of all time. This series is must read. A lot of themes in this, but the one that speaks to me the most is the relationship between a father and a son, the relationship between the father and children just overall, and that's one of the main plot points in this story. Mark lives under the shadow of his, of his uh, great father, Omni-Man. He wants to live up to that one day, but then comes the realization that your, your father, and really we all come to that realization one day, your parents are just people. Your parents are just like you. I love this book. This is in a CGC 9.6, a fantastic book. Hopefully one day, maybe have it in a 9.8, but for now, this is my copy and I love it. All right, next up on the list is House of Secrets number 92, the first appearance of Swamp Thing. I've gushed about Swamp Thing on this channel a whole bunch. Swamp Thing is probably one of my favorite characters of all time. Definitely one of my favorite DC characters. So Swamp Thing kind of made a transition as far as um, being written originally by Lynn Wine and then being taken over by Alan Moore in that definitive run. Swamp Thing covers so many topics, specifically a lot of social issues, and it does it extremely well. Swamp Thing is kind of the lovable uh, anti-hero. He's almost a villain in some regards, but he is uh, one with the green. He's in touch with nature. And this character allows us to explore so many different themes. Forbidden love, our, our relationship with nature, our relationship with one another, how we should treat each other. Swamp Thing is more than just a ripoff of the creature of the Black Lagoon. Swamp Thing is his own thing. has has made so many t uh, different types of ripoffs. Specifically, you know, Man Thing from Marvel. I know he's kind of a different character, but Swamp Thing has really kind of transcended comic books, in my opinion. He is one of the best characters and some of the best stories in comic books of all time. Next up on my list is Amazing Spider-Man number 14. This is the first appearance of the Green Goblin. Spider-Man is one of those characters, and I know this is a really kind of controversial, and I really have never talked about this on the channel. Spider-Man would be nothing without his rogues gallery. I think Spider-Man in himself is a bit uh, overrated in a sense that Spider-Man is perpetually the angsty teenager that's trying to get the girl. His, he, uh, his villains, his rogues gallery, elevate him to Batman-type status. Green Goblin is Spider-Man's most, most interesting, most dynamic villain. This book means more to me than just the comic book itself. The switch flipped for me that day in the movie, movie theater, seeing William Defoe's portrayal of the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, and I knew that this was a character that I was going to love forever. The Green Goblin is one of the best villains ever. And this is a great book. A, a very sought after book and a super valuable book. I'm glad to have this in the collection. All right, next one up. Another Spider-Man book. Amazing Spider-Man number 129. The first appearance of Frank Castle, a.k.a. The Punisher. The Punisher is the encapsulation of 
what we would do for our loved ones. What if you had the abilities of, of, a, tactic, of a tactical soldier? You had the ability to get revenge on the people that were robbed from you, taken from you. Would you do it? What would you do to take vengeance? The Punisher is one of the greatest comic book characters ever created. And this is an iconic cover. It's an iconic superhero and an iconic symbol. The symbol has kind of surpassed just comic books. It has now transcended that. You see the symbols on the back of jacked up trucks. You see the symbols on military personnel. You see the symbol everywhere. The Punisher symbol stands for something now that whether you agree with it or not, it, it is something. But the Punisher character in itself has changed this kind of social dynamic that we see. This, this comic book is iconic. It's legendary. And to have this in an 8.5, this is one of the greatest comic books ever. And it's one of, by far, the best comics in my collection. Last but not least, Hulk 181. What is there to say about this book that hadn't already been said? The first full appearance of Wolverine, everybody's favorite half-man. Showing them claws, just a ball of fury. He brings comedy, he brings humor, he brings ferocity into any comic book he's in. He's a legend on the big screen, played by Hugh Jackman. He, he transcends comic books. Wolverine is everybody's favorite character, re regardless of whether you're in, in com in, into comic books or not. If a Wolverine movie comes out, people are going to go watch it. If a new Wolverine comic comes out, people are more than likely buying it. Some of the most famous prolific authors of all time have written stories on Wolverine. Chris Claremont, Frank, Frank Miller, some of my top 10 favorite writers of all time. This iconic cover has spawned so many homages. It's led to the production of uh, statues like this. this. This cover is iconic, and the character within this, Wolverine, is one of the best comic book characters of all time. This is by far the most valuable comic in my collection. I'm super lucky to have it. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.